So you've decided to learn C++. Well, congratulations and condolences. Most of you are learning C++ because you have to, because you're taking this course. And the reason you're taking this course is because you have to. Most of you coming into this course already know one programming language, probably the C language. And those of you that started with C have probably figured out by now that C++ and C might have a few things in common. Now, those of you that have spent time learning programming with C as your first programming language, spending some quality time over an entire semester learning everything there is to know about C, probably already have some ideas of why C can be a pretty frustrating language to work with. That is to say, by the end of a course like CSC 111, you were probably exhausted with the amount of work that was needed for what seems like relatively simple tasks in a programming sense. For example, making lists of things, reading strings of text from the user. And so if you can recall that sense of exhaustion after CSC 111, then you're in for a treat, because it turns out that when we learn C++, we're going to discover that some of those tasks are not so tough after all. Now, some of you are coming into this course without knowing the C language. You've learned some other first language. And you're in for a treat, too, because it turns out there are some things, if you started with a language like Java or Python, there are some things about C++ that'll be pretty easy coming in from those languages. On the other hand, there are some other things that make up for it by being pretty tough. There are some things that you've never heard of in Java or Python that are pretty important in C and C++, you'll have to pick up as well. So I think all told, that means that we're all sort of on a level playing field here. We're all coming into C++ from some other language that frustrates us in some way. So in C, maybe it's the huge amount of micromanagement that you need. If it's Java or Python, maybe it's the lack of control that the language gives you. Maybe it's the speed of the language. But either way, we've all ended up deciding to learn C++. Um, and as I'm sure you know, especially if you've met me before, um, I'm very big on this one gimmick about teaching programming, which is that if we do our jobs correctly, we shouldn't ever need to introduce a brand new concept unless whatever we already know just isn't good enough. That is to say, it should be my responsibility to prove to you that you actually need some new thing, some new toy in the language, before I can expect you to actually learn it. If we learn only a small amount of the language and it's able to solve all of the problems we need to solve, then what point really is there in trying to memorize all of these clever extra toys? And so we're going to start on that even in the next couple of videos. But of course, before I can do that, I have to start with a tradition, which is before we can start actually working in any programming language, we have to write one simple basic program that prints out the text, hello world. And I'm going to do that. And um, those of you that come from C might already be a little bit reassured because you're staring at this incomplete bit of code that I've written here, and it does look pretty familiar. In fact, what I have sitting between lines 8 and 11 looks pretty much exactly like a C program. What I have on line 6 is a tiny bit different, but it, it's broadly about the same. I, I don't see a dot H anywhere, but even this looks a little bit vaguely comforting, reminding us of those last days of CSC 111 with all of the frustration and exhaustion, but still some sense of home. And so somehow I've got to start actually talking about C++ and not C. So we'll start. Um, I have to start by generating some basic output. And so I guess this means I have to introduce a new feature. And I guess it's fitting in a language like C++, a language that's so complicated compared to C, that the very first new feature I'm going to introduce is one of my least favorite. Um, C++ is a language that's grown tremendously since it was invented in the 1980s. And unlike quite a few other languages, it is aged like a fine wine, like the finest wine. The original C++ um, was pretty interesting, it was pretty great. But C++ has become amazing over the past uh, 10 or 15 years. What we're going to see today, though, is an example of sort of one of those original things, one of those rough edges. Um, and you'll hear me complaining about this over the entire semester. So I want to print out the text, hello world. And instead of something nice and concrete, like the printf that we might have used in a C course, we're going to find ourselves writing this. We can see there's the text, hello world. So at least there's something familiar in this strange 
uh, incantation that I'm writing, but it's surrounded by all sorts of weird stuff. And one thing you're going to notice as we go on, you'll notice it very quickly, is that C++ is a massive language. And C++ has an absolutely massive library compared to a language like C. The, the library in a language like C, the standard library, is pretty small compared to most other languages. Um, one of the things about the C++ standard library that we're going to both love and hate is the fact that often it, con it contains these features that seemed fair for their time, but haven't aged that well. The language as a whole has aged amazingly compared to other languages, but there are some features, this being one of them, the way that output is generated, that seem a little bit clunky. And I'm going to expand on what this really means um, over the next few weeks. But basically, what we'll notice in C++ is to generate output, we often use this operator here. And the idea behind this is sort of... Um, the underlying notion is I'm taking this string and I'm sending it into my output. I'm sort of pushing it into my output. And we represent our output stream with this notation here, C out. I'm going to talk more about um, what this std colon colon business is all about in a different video. Uh, and so we'll find that when we want to generate output, we use this, which is formerly called stream insertion, the stream insertion operator, um, to push our output into our output stream. So I'll try running this for the sake of completing the example. And so, of course, we'll need to compile and then run our code. So to compile, I'm going to use a C++ compiler. There are many different C++ compilers in the world, but in this course, we're going to use G++. You might recall from CSC 111 that we use GCC. Well, G++ is sort of the more sophisticated, older sibling of GCC. We'll use G++. We're going to turn on all warnings. We're going to use, in this course, the... Uh, 2020 C++ standard, so it, it's almost brand new, and then we'll make our executable called hello world, and it's hello world.cpp, and we'll wait for that to compile. And if we go stare over here in our JupyterHub file browser, we'll wait for it for a second, we will notice that because it compiled successfully, you might recall that if the compiler says nothing, that means it was able to do its job. Because it compiled successfully, over here we've got our executable, and we can now run it in our terminal by typing hello world. And there it is. We were able to generate some simple output. Now, to prove a brief point before I continue, I want to show that we can generate as much output as we want, and I want to try and unpack a little bit what's going on with this token here. So first, if I try and uh, reproduce the same line three times, then sure enough, I get hello world three times. It turns out that if I want to, I can choose not to push in whatever this means. So std colon colon end l. And we'll just see if we can observe uh, and deduce from what we observe what exactly this does. And you'll notice that what apparently happened if I omit end l is I don't get a new line. And it turns out this is one of these weird C++ idioms that takes the place of what you might use backslash n for in the C language. One interesting thing to observe, although not a good habit to get into, is that because C++ is based on C, you're welcome to go dragging in C idioms that you might remember, although I think it's better to build the C++ habit as early as possible. So it turns out backslash n actually works. There are reasons why it's better to use end l, which is one reason you'll notice that I always do that in my examples. So in any case, we were able to generate some output and demonstrate this strange interplay between old-fashioned C things that were still allowed to use, and this oddly verbose and cryptic C++ syntax that, again, over the semester we're going to both love and hate. Okay, so we've written Hello World, we've seen that C++ is a language, we've seen that we compile it, and we've seen that we can run it, and that it seems to generate output just like a C program, so I guess only one thing left to do, which is to, you know, make the language do something useful for us.